On May 16, 2017, a pair of Mississippi kites flew over Monticello Park in Alexandria, Virginia. Three days later, four kites flew over. Two of them eventually built a nest high in an oak tree about a block from the park. Mississippi kites had nested in the neighborhood a couple of times during the previous few years. Still, seeing a kite in Alexandria is extremely uncommon, and a nesting pair is even rarer. They have been known to breed in northern Virginia only since 1995. The toys called kites were named after the birds called kites, but not this species. Mississippi kites were named by the ornithologist Alexander Wilson, who found the first specimen in Mississippi during the 1800s. They breed in the southern United States, but have no special connection to the state of Mississippi. Both the male and female kite helped to build the nest in Alexandria, which was about a foot deep, two feet across, and composed mostly of dead twigs. The female usually lays two eggs, which are incubated for about a month by both birds, with the female incubating more than the male. The nest was high enough in the tree so that people could view it without disturbing the birds, and the viewing location was far enough away from houses so as not to disturb people who live in the neighborhood. A lot of the neighbors who saw the kites in a telescope became very enthusiastic about these special birds. Two chicks hatched in early July. They could not be seen until they became large enough to poke their heads above the rim of the nest. Mississippi kite chicks usually stay in the nest for at least a month and sometimes more, depending on food availability. They start out as little white balls of fluff. One chick seemed larger and stronger than the other. Unlike many raptor species whose chicks can be hostile and competitive, Mississippi kite chicks show little aggression in the nest and sometimes preen each other. Still, if there is not enough food, the stronger chick will usually get most of it because the parents would rather have one well-fed chick than two malnourished ones. On July 13th, the second chick was found dead on the ground below the nest. It was only about four inches long. Adult kites are about 14 inches from the tip of the beak to the tip of the tail. Through the rest of July, the remaining chick continued to grow, and some of its white downy feathering started to be replaced with darker feathers. It also began to spend more time at the rim of the nest. Mississippi kites are graceful and elegant flyers. In this composite photo, you can see the male in flight. His head, body, and underwings are pale gray. The similar parts on the female are a darker mottled gray. Here is a composite of the female. The two sexes are similar in size, and the differences in plumage can be difficult to see on a bird high in the air. In addition to the two adults, at least one subadult kite was sometimes seen flying high above the nest. Adults have solid dark tails, while subadults have bars on their tail. Subadult plumage is the last plumage before a bird molts into adult plumage. Some subadults will help adults with the raising of chicks, and for kites nesting in the Great Plains, nests with helpers were more successful than those without. Juvenile plumage is the first complete plumage that a kite molts into after it loses its downy feathers. Juvenile kites have bands on their tail like a subadult, but they have dark brown streaking on their body. Mississippi kites are gregarious birds. They usually nest colonially, and during migration they can form flocks numbering in the thousands. Here is a large flock swirling in the Darien region of Panama near the border with Colombia. They are skilled aerial hunters and they use their long legs to snatch cicadas and other insects out of the air. The adults would return to the nest periodically to drop off food. They brought mostly insects, but kites also catch frogs, toads, lizards, snakes, bats, and small birds and mammals. They even sometimes scavenge roadkill. Like most raptors, the kites have a pouch at the bottom of their throat called a crop, which they can use for storing food. When hunting, the kites would waste energy if they had to return to the nest every time they caught an insect for the nestling. Instead, they catch insects and swallow them. The insects stay in the crop without the digestion process starting. When chicks are very young, they are fed by the adults. As the chicks get older, the adults still feed them, but will also start to leave food at the bottom of the nest. This way, chicks can learn to eat without being fed, and leaving the food frees up more time for the adults to hunt. Pretty soon, the adults were spending little time at the nest when bringing food to the chick. Here is another hit-and-run food transfer viewed at one-quarter speed. In slow motion, you can get a better look at the plumage of the adult and see the spread wings of the nestling. You can also compare the sizes of the two birds.
When the chick defecated, it would point its cloaca over the edge of the nest and propel the waste into the leaves. It was very important for the chick to use this method so that the nest would not become fouled. Birds in a nest have to endure all types of weather conditions, including rain, high winds, and intense heat. The chick sometimes got jostled around a lot in the wind. During heavy rains, an adult might sit on top of the chick to shelter it. While waiting to be fed, the chick sometimes would glean small insects from the leaves near the nest. It was practicing finding and eating food on its own without being fed. A nest is not a bird's home. It is a place to lay eggs and raise young, but nests are abandoned when these jobs are complete. A bird's home is its feathers, which protect it from the elements and help it to regulate body temperature. When waiting for the next visit from an adult, the nestling spent a lot of time preening, making sure its feathers were clean and properly arranged. This is very important for a young bird getting ready to leave the nest and go out on its own. Preparing for flight is another important activity. The nestling frequently stretched its wings and exercised its wing muscles. August 4th was the first day footage was shot of the young kite jumping out of the nest. The youngster hopped onto a branch and stayed for about 25 seconds, which is about twice as long as the first flight of the Wright brothers. A couple of days later, the chick was spending more time on branches near the nest. The adults were still bringing food, but they left it at the nest rather than giving it to the chick on one of the branches. This reduced the possibility that the food would be dropped or lost. New feathers can be itchy when growing in, and the young kite often had a good scratch. On August 15th, footage was obtained of the young kite flying. The flight was from a nearby tree, and the kite undoubtedly had flown there. Some observers had seen the young kite flying on previous days. Here is the flight shown at one-tenth speed. Once the young kite was out of the nest, it still had a lot to practice and learn. You can see it following insects with its eyes, a skill it would need when it had to find food for itself. It continued to glean insects from branches. The young kite also practiced its balance in order to be steadier on its legs. A kite who has not previously been out of the nest must learn rudimentary skills such as how to balance on a branch. Even though the nest sometimes moved in the wind, the base was stationary. Small branches are not stationary and are affected by the weight of the bird, and the young kite had to learn to adjust for this. Kites are often clumsy when starting out on their own. They must be especially careful to learn how to handle food without dropping it. The Monticello kites began to head south around mid-September. Kites migrate over land, and large groups of them gather in the south-central United States to fly to their wintering grounds in the central part of South America. Most of the kites are south of the U.S. by mid-October. This is a long and perilous journey for a young bird who has been flying for about a month and only recently learned to hunt for food. The young bird will hunt with its parents when it is about two months old, but the adults tend not to feed their chicks much after that. While the breeding range of Mississippi kites appears to be moving northward, it does not appear to be doing so in a regular or gradual manner. Some kites have nested in southern Virginia, but there are large geographic gaps with no nesting records before the areas in northern Virginia. Some have nested in New Jersey and New Hampshire, but in few places in between. A small number of kites seem to be pioneers seeking out new nesting sites. Why they choose these scattered locations is unknown. Birders and other interested parties will be monitoring whether Mississippi kites nest in Alexandria and other northerly locations in subsequent years.